Welcome to How We Grow, an essential playbook to grow and scale your vacation rental business with advice and insights from the best in the biz with your host, Linnell Gordon. Welcome to the Vacation Rental Show, How We Grow. I'm Linnell Gordon, your host, and I'd like to introduce you to a couple who are owners of Seaside Vacations since 2015. They were voted by Vorma to be the Vacation Rental Management of the Year last year, and I'm very excited to have them on. They are kind, smart, savvy Vacation Rental Managers. You guys have probably met them if you've gone to any of the conferences because they network really well. Elaine and Lance Stitcher, thank you so much for being with me this morning. Hi, Linnell. Thank you so much for having us. Yep, thank you. So I am excited to have you guys. I, I know that you've been in the industry a long time, and so have I. Tell me a little bit about your business. Gosh. So Seaside Vacations was born in 2015. And like most people in the industry, we backed into it. We never would have ever imagined we'd be where we are today. But Lance had grown a company in Ocean City, Maryland to over 500 homes and didn't like the direction that company was going at that point. So he looked at me one day and said, I think we should start our own business. We had one in college and one on the way to college. I had some choice words for him that we would bleep out right now if I were to put them on here. But we took a leap of faith and it was very scary. We built our business. We built our website. We started from ground zero and then we went out and got our first property all well burning through our savings in order to get this company up and running. And we've been very blessed because here we are almost 10 years later and over 450 homes in Ocean City and Chincoteague. And we still like each other. It's all good. <laughs> What's that? There is that. That's important when you work together that you like each other for certain. So tell me now that you've been doing this for a good long time and you started from scratch, if you had to look back and say, I wished I'd done X, Y, C, a little differently, or you would have done something sooner. What's the best piece of advice you could give people who are just starting out to think about what you might have done sooner or differently today? So many things. <laughs> so oh, really? Many things. Really? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Lance. Why don't you start? Mm -hmm. Well, so I'm going to answer the question differently because one thing that we did extremely well was we began building our brand on day zero. And I see a lot of people that, especially now, that the, the landscape has changed. 10 years ago, you didn't get into the business by becoming an Airbnb host and then picking up a co-hosting and then decided to build a management company. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of people out there that have yet to start building their brand. And that becomes an incredibly important piece of the pie if you decide that you want to go beyond mm -hmm. being a host or a co-host. I agree completely on that because from day one, when we started marketing, we didn't have any money and we relied heavily on social media. And to this day, we're so strong on our social that ICND, we use them for a lot of our marketing needs. They're blown away by how strong our social is. They're always like, we don't know what you're doing, but keep it up. It was a free resource where you could build your reputation in the community. And it has helped bring on owners, guests. I mean, it's been incredible for us. And it's free. It costs nothing. And to this day, we still rely on it pretty heavily. For a perfect example, a few days ago on our largest community group, someone was looking for a property manager. This is a, all of our markets have this one group that has like 20, 30,000 tourists and owners and, and community members in it. And somebody was looking for a property manager. And immediately our homeowners went to bat for us. And then a guest would come on to a homeowner's comment and say, you're right. We've stayed with them for years. And you cannot pay for that kind of marketing. And it happens every single time. And it has been amazing. And our phones, every time a post like that comes up, our phones start ringing off the hooks. So guys, I want you to listen. One of the most important things that Elena said here is not just that it's social media. Now, was that Facebook? Mainly Facebook, but yeah. also Instagram. Yeah. So here's the power of Facebook. The power of Facebook is not in individually posting. The power of Facebook is in groups, my friend. Right. Creating groups around the area because people join those. And that's still very powerful. So I'm excited to hear you say that. Yeah. And it can be a blessing and a curse, though. I mean, <laughs> when something goes wrong, you want to get ahead of it and prevent it from ever showing up on social. But going back to what Lance was saying about building your brand, I was actually texting with Matt Landau just the other day because I've always used this term called our usness. 
as in us hyphen NESS. And it's like who you are when we market who we are as a family and our dog is part of it and our team is part of it. And we just really try to stay true to who we are. And if someone doesn't like it, then then maybe we're not for them. And that's just fine. But it attracts the kind of owners that we want, the kind of guests that we want, and the kind of team that we want. If you get a chance later today, if you did not see it, we had a little bit of fun with a video on social this weekend. My marketing manager, Tim, along with Julia, who works for us this summer, created the Seaside Vacations End of Friday walkout song. And it is the funniest thing, but it exactly shows who we are in our unique personalities and that we're a family and that we're not just a business. And I really do believe that owners and guests and just the community in general treat you differently when they don't think of you as a corporate entity, so to speak. We're just Elaine and Lance and our dog Teague and we're on the boat and that does so much for us. Let me ask you this. So talk for a few minutes about the booking window. And what's happened this year that's different than last year? You're in an area where you have a lot of return guests. So tell me what's different this year. What we're seeing this year is the booking windows has really shortened dramatically. If we rewind six months ago, the booking window was looking fairly normal. Because of the 30 or so percent repeat guest rate that we have, it made the numbers look pretty good on the booking window early on, but then it began to slide. And we're still having our benchmark reports look great. We're leading the market by a couple, four or five percentage points. Occupancy year over year looks great, but it's all happening at a later date. Which makes owners extremely nervous. It Um, it makes our owners nervous because they've never lived through it before. I know there's some other markets where that's how it works and it wouldn't be a big deal. It's also put a little extra stress or strain on our operations team because We're not accustomed to having, as I was saying earlier, I think we've made 850 reservations in the first 15 days of June, and 65% of them are 30 days or less lead time. A significant portion of them are less than a week. I don't have the exact math on it, but it was a significant number that are only looking a handful of days ahead of time. And as I mentioned, we have longtime Breezeway users, but we just turned on Breezeway Gap Night messaging. So guests receive an auto message two days prior to departure four days prior to arrival if there's an extra day on either end and offer it to them at a discounted rate. And they've been jumping at it like in a way that we can't even believe it, which shows again, people are wanting that flexibility. And what's interesting over the past couple of years, as we've brought on new properties, we've brought more and more into what we call our flex stay program, three night minimum all year. And they've done incredibly well. And this year, we've been changing some of our longtime seven night minimum properties to flex stay because it's what people are shopping for. It's what they want. And those properties are filling up faster than the ones that still have that hard Saturday to Saturday or Sunday to Sunday in season. Let me ask you this, because this was my strategy with the flex. And I used it this year and it was successful too. We divide it by the number of five rather than seven for those flex stays so that you actually get more money for the smaller stays. And I found that successful. What about you guys? Yes, it's funny. That was one of my little hacks all the way back to probably like 2013 is the nightly rate was always five sevenths of the week. Yes. So I've been doing that for a very long time. Now with dynamic pricing, it ends up a little bit different same kind of guidelines. We just get there a little bit of a different way using wheelhouse. But it definitely works. And consumers love it. And I like the last half million visits to our website for two years now, I guess, people have been searching for 4.2 nights. Mm-hmm. And I've developed this little theory on the side that people have a budget for lodging on their travel trip. And maybe it's $2,000. And if all they can find are seven night rentals, they're happy to spend $2,000. But if they can find a four night rental that they really love, they're still happy to spend $2,000. And that provides extra work for our cleaners, which love it. It provides extra work for our operations team, which they don't so much love it. But it also provides extra revenue for the owners who also love it. Right. And you remember, you know, back in the day when all the cleaners were working on Saturdays and Sundays and begging for work during the week, this alleviates that problem as well and just spreads it out a little bit more. Because you're using local cleaners. Are you using a service that hires them or do you guys hire them directly and have your own cleaners and manage them? Both, actually. We work in two different markets. And in the Virginia market, we are 100% in-house, or I'd probably say 98% in-house. I think we have just two holdouts from the old days. 
And then we work with entirely vendors in our Maryland market. On different days, I feel differently about those things. There are some days I wish we were all vendors and it's such a headache. And other days, I'm incredibly grateful that we have it in-house. So pros and cons to both for sure. For sure. This year has been different with our booking window and it continues to be a short booking window, even for all markets, mostly. Most all markets, let me put it that way. What advice would you give to people to communicate with your homeowners about this? Because you said your homeowners were concerned. How do you alleviate that concern from your homeowners, the things you're booking at the last minute? Yeah, totally all about communication. I mean, even some of the owners that have been around well before COVID, well, they liked the COVID boom as well. Who didn't? We all did once we knew everything was going to be okay. But even now they're a little bit nervous because even though they knew life before COVID, well, that was really good and now they're worried again. So it's just important to be communicating with them before they go elsewhere to communicate about it. For instance, just this past weekend, going back to social, noticed a client of one of our competitors took their property and went on to this same group and advertised all the vacancies they had and they didn't understand it. And I thought, dear God, I would die if one of our homeowners did that. But hopefully that never happens because we are communicating with them and telling them exactly what we're doing. Excellent. And another thing that you mentioned was we do network a lot and that's paid off for us because Mm -hmm. we can pick up the phone or drop an email to somebody in pretty much any market and just say, hey, this is what I'm seeing. What are you seeing? And particularly if you lead with data that you're willing to share, you will get an answer back 100% of the time. And we do that frequently because we do see different, almost micro trends. Sometimes it's only one weekend or one week of a month that isn't working. We've all certainly seen like that one property that's been, I was dealing with one this morning. I've got a property that's been a very consistent home for five years. It's not working this year. And they've even done updates and we've taken new pictures and we cannot figure out why. Well, it's also the influx of other vacation rentals in the market. We're completely saturated right now. That's another thing that's really leading to the booking window issues across the country, I'm sure. I know in the last four and a half years, our market's gone from a little under 500 licensed vacation rentals to about 825 now. And that's just in our shake and take market. We've seen something very similar in Ocean City, Maryland. And a lot of other people have seen the same thing that as our industry as a whole has grown since 2021, vacation rental supply has outpaced traveler demand. The number of people staying in vacation rentals has grown as well. But if it's grown 20% and the supply has grown 30%, we got holes to fill. Mm -hmm. Supply and demand, exactly. Vacation rental managers utilize LiveRes and their powerful software that goes beyond the standard. LiveRes empowers you to operate your business the way you want, while offering you powerful support and access to a community of partners and experts to grow your vacation rental business. LiveRes' industry differentiator is software plus support, community, and service, with high converting websites included to get you started. Learn more at LiveRes.com. Let me ask you this. You guys, tell me your favorite guest or owner story. Again, there are so many. First thing that came to my mind was a nightmare story and a happy story. And it's Monday, and I'm going to go with a happy story. <laughs> so Dale, remember Dale? Mm-hmm. So it, this goes back a couple of years, but we still keep in touch with these guests, and it still warms my heart completely. So we had this guest who was probably in his mid to late 80s at the time. And this was during covid And he was whisking his love off to Chicotig Island to get married. And then COVID struck. He was 90. She was 88. Is that how old they were? God, he was 90. And this is a few years ago now. And so we were working with him to reschedule over and over again. And finally, he was like, you know what? I'm 90 years old. We need to get the show on the road because I don't know how much longer I'm going to be here. So as the world started to come back to life, We rebooked him. We had to find a minister. Make a long story short, we threw together a wedding in the back of our office, right on the water for this couple. We were able to pull this off. We got the minister. We got them married on the water behind our office. And it was the most incredible thing in the world. And they still stay with us every year. And we still love them. They haven't booked this year. Now I got to reach out because that makes me a little bit nervous. (laughs) But anyway, it was a heartwarming story that even the local news picked up on and it it made the nightly news. So it was just really cool. Do you have a story? Yeah, I'll go in the other direction. I'll tell the quick story about the very first owner that we fired. 
And it was a really hard decision because we were still small. I don't know, maybe 30 homes at the end of that season. And it was our highest grossing, highest netting property. It was a beautiful home, centerpiece of the community kind of place. Mm -hmm. But we found out after we'd hired the owner that she had already been through all the managers in the area. And at the end of the season, she had accused us of breaking into her owner's closet and rearranging everything. everything just to confuse her. And we just rearranged everything in the owner's closet just to confuse her. And then, but then we locked it back up, which we didn't have a key to. But it, that was just one of the things. And it went south quickly. And, and we had to make a very difficult decision. And we leaned on some friends. And they were like, you, you got it at the time. You got to do it. It might be your best property, but it's your worst owner. And it's one of those things where if you have one owner that is, well, one thirtieth of your company, but requires 25% of the work, it's probably best to cut them loose. And you had mentioned earlier, what do you wish you did sooner? And I can take this one statement. And when it comes to hiring and firing, whether it be an owner, a guest, or one of your team, not doing it quickly enough. Last year, we let a homeowner go good to just brilliant properties, but she was a little off and we could tell that from the beginning, but they were great homes. So we took them and we tried to work with her and it kept getting more and more difficult. We finally did let her go last summer, but it was after she showed up at the property while a guest was there and got into an altercation with them over a cookie tin. Yeah, it happened. And we relocated the guest and we fired her on the spot and never looked back. Now, in hindsight, we probably put up with a little too much of her cuckoo-ness for too long and it had to end this way. So follow your instincts, your gut feeling. Your gut instincts are nine times out of 10, right on from the beginning. Listen to the red flags, pay attention because at the end of the day, it's going to it's going to suck it to you. And that's not even the end of that story. We also have a real estate brokerage in both markets. And we had a particular home listed for sale. And immediately after we fired this owner, she went out and bought one of our other homes. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. So we ended up losing three for the price of one. But it was okay. It was worth it. And knowing what I know now, I would have let her go sooner. Because you know what? If something takes its toll on you, your peace your team's piece. It's just a vortex. It'll suck morale down and it's just not worth it. Yeah. And you only mentioned staff hiring, firing, that type of thing. Predictive index testing or cultural index. No, I understand that. I used predictive index for all of my staff at my company as well. It's incredible to teach you how to communicate with one another. And yeah, you'd love to send it to your owners, but here's something you said that I think is really important and worth repeating, Lance. You said if it's taking so much of your staffing time, if it's taking so much of your time, you have an owner that is one four hundredth of the inventory, but they're taking much more than that of your time. Be cognizant of how much time you're spending with certain owners, even if they're not difficult. If they're taking that much of your time, that takes your bandwidth. And you have to take that into consideration in your business. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. A lot of people in the industry will have an annual trim where they'll take the bottom two, three, five percent of the inventory and, and really take a deep look at it, evaluate it, and see if it, whether or not it, it should stay or go. I um, did that this year. And if you ask your staff, hey, if you could get rid of one or two properties, which ones would they be? And when everybody's got the same answer, you better take a good hard look at what's giving them so much heartburn. We used to create a report for our property managers at LSI called Dogs of the Dow. We did that exact same thing. And then into that report, you also created a cell, which was the amount of time that it was taking. And that same thing where you ask everybody which one they would get rid of. And everybody says the same one. It's not surprising. Yeah, not at all. And the same thing goes with hiring and firing, as I mentioned. We're very close with our team. We're very much like a family. And one of our first hires recently left and she was with us for almost three years and it was painful, but it was necessary. And she was dragging the team down and there were things happening that I didn't even know about until after she left and the team is lighter again. And when you are very close with your team, people don't want to rat on each other. They don't want to be the one to say anything. But when you have one person dragging the entire team down, it's painful. So it's really important to pay attention to that as well. Especially if they're customer-facing guys. Yeah. 
especially if they're talking to your guests or your owners. I want to say something to you guys because vendors, we have that same list too. We know which property managers are difficult to work with as well. And I just want to say to you, you have an extraordinary reputation of kindness and friendship with your vendors. And we love you. I just want you to know that. Thank you. I think it's incredibly kind to hear. I don't know. We just look at everything like family. And I know like that's real people. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, mean, I have heard horror stories of how vendors have been treated at conferences or by other managers. And it's mind blowing to me. I mean, we can't do what we do without everyone out there supporting us and the products they bring and the services they bring. And I can't even wrap my head around that. So it's the same thing I always say to our team, without you, we're nothing. Right. We are definitely in the hospitality industry and it is a relationship business. And we treasure the relationships that we have with our owners, with our guests, with our staff. And most of them, I don't even think of as vendors. I mean, both. I don't even like to use that word. It felt like a bad word, didn't it? They're friends. And I can tell you that most of the people that I serviced in the industry, as far as with products, software products, they're my friends. I mean, they're still my friends today. But you have a really great reputation of being kind and smart in what you do. And I mean, I didn't know you. I was introduced to you through someone else that had known you for a long time. One of my very good friends. And she's just like, you've got to meet these people. They're like your family. And I was like, oh, cool. And that honestly... That comes from other people in this industry extending the same friendship to us. And we tell this story all the time. And if someone out there is just starting, I cannot emphasize this enough. It is about relationships. And our friends, the Rafascos, Amy and Carrie, they're just, just I can't even, there's so many now. But friends that were there for us that had been doing it light years longer than we had, that we could pick up the phone we could call, we could work through things. To this day, we still do. Doug Brindley, just so many people that were there and continue to be there for us. And we want to be there for people in the same way. People who love this industry, who love this business and love what they do, want to give back because it raises the entire industry. It makes all of us better. This is true. This is true. And we really do become friends. And I encourage everyone who's just starting out, though, or even if you're going through a difficult time there, the conferences, look, if you want network and you want to talk to people who've been there, done that, Lance and Elaine almost always are there. You can reach out to them <laughs> if they're coming. Is it fine if people reach out to you guys? Always. How would they reach you guys? Email, Email. ourselves. Yeah, anything at all. Send a message. We're always more than happy to connect. And conferences, that's been a hot topic lately. There's been a lot of things being said about different organizations and travel and conferences. And I don't care what anyone says. I find these conferences to be invaluable. Our VRMA experience has been invaluable. We wouldn't know you or how many other people without that. And I know that the industry as a whole, I think we're all going to work together to make these experiences better and better. But I sure hope and pray they never go away because we need them so much. We do. And we need good ones. And you've mentioned some of my favorite people there. And we just got invited to the town hall that they're having. And I look forward to that. I got to tell you, I've got some really smart people there, really smart people that care about what happens in this industry. And at this point, I think we're really on a good path there. I'm excited to see what's going to happen this year. I really am. 100% agree. The people that are working on this are passionate about the industry, have been around for a long time, will continue to be around for a, a long time as well. Yeah. They've been there a long time. They're going to be there a long time. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we end? I don't know. It, it's We're never speechless. What's yeah, up with that? I don't know. Can I say vote for me? No, you can come <laughs> No. <laughs> you definitely can say that. I can tell you that. You mentioned Doug Brindley. One of my favorite podcasts I've ever done was with Doug Brindley. And it's because Doug is all about the numbers. And if you ever wondered what numbers you need to look at and how to be profitable, he is just so brilliant at that. It's his juju. He's really amazing at that. He is. I love it. I tease him all the time. I'm like, Doug, you're the only person I've ever met that can get away with charging a pet fee and keeping the whole thing. And the owner doesn't get anything. I'm like, how do you do that? <laughs> No, but we continue to learn from these brilliant He's brilliant in the, in the business. We really do. And just those connections, every single time we face an issue, we turn to our industry friends and say, have you faced this? How do we do this? What should we do? 
and we come away better for it. And I think just the conversation that we've had today shows how quickly this industry is changing every single day. Something is changing. And as Brandon Saul likes to say, if you ain't first, you're last. You got to be out there ahead of it and paying attention to the data and paying attention to the, the new products and doing whatever you need to do to stay relevant and take care of your owners and show them that even as market conditions change, we're doing everything we can to make sure they're in the forefront of it. I agree. We started doing gap nights back in 2013. That gap night strategy has been around for a long time. We automated it back then too. We didn't automate it. We were doing it manually. And if anyone out there isn't doing it, oh my gosh, do it. I can't even believe how often people are tacking another day on either end of their stay. It's mind-blowing how often they take advantage of it. And even if they can't always do that, they'll come back and say, well, can I pay for early check-in? I can't spend the night, but can I check in a little bit early? It's just been amazing. There are some growing pains with it for sure with operations because my people are very used to having their schedule done. And now it's like the schedule's done. Oh, wait a minute, we need to change this. Wait a minute, we need to change that. We had a change report that handled that. And every day they'd print out that change report. So I'm sure they have something like that. But if you're not taking advantage of the gap nights, that is money on the table lost, as well as early check-in and late checkout. And there are lots of softwares out there that will allow you to limit the number that you can do a week or certain houses like the 22-bedroom houses that you couldn't do. You just pulled them off the list. So take advantage of this last minute or this shortened booking window, guys, with some of these techniques that Lance and Elaine have spoken about so that you can increase your revenue at the same time. And I'm really interesting to have conversations at the end of the season to see what other people are experiencing. But I am finding that the guests are a little bit different this year. I definitely think that COVID changed travel expectations and what guests are expecting when they travel. And I I feel like the tough cookies are tougher than ever. And the first to have their hand out and say, what are you going to do to make it right? Compensation. If you want to make my ears just like, say the word compensation to me. I want to give you everything in the world if something goes wrong. But when you come at me with compensation, well, it's just, yeah, I have to take a breath and maybe grab a Tito's. But I'm interested <laughs> at the end of the season to see how this is because other friends that I'm talking to, we are finding guests to be just more demanding. More than, demanding. And I get it. I mean, the world may have returned to normal, but people are looking for more flexibility. The prices haven't gone down and mm -mm. they're starting to, to hold all the cards and it's going to be interesting. I think it's going to be a great season because we have no choice. It has to be a great season, but we're going to be a little bit tired at the end, I predict. Well, good. We can plan a vacation. Yes. And just for the record, <laughs> well, just guys, for the record no one on this podcast has been compensated for their time. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say I really appreciate you guys taking the time to come and to do this. There are always scheduling difficulties and we had a bunch, but you guys are so kind and so friendly. And I just appreciate it. Guys, if you are at a show and you see Elaine or Lance, you want to see what they look like. We do have this on video so you can see what they look like, or you can look them up on LinkedIn, but they are the nicest people. Please say hi and tell them that you saw this and feel free guys to reach out for any questions you might have. This is a show to really create a mentorship for all of us in the industry because we can all learn from one another. And I'm so grateful for you guys being here. Thank you. I'm so grateful for you. Thank you. This has been wonderful. And I hope that we do get to connect with some new friends and some old friends from this. And I hope everybody has, if you're in your peak season, I hope everybody has a fabulous season. How many Saturdays are left? I'm usually more on the ball with that. Vote for Lance, just yeah. <laughs> A vote yeah. for Lance is a vote for nice people. We didn't yeah. say we didn't say what election. <laughs> if I, I didn't, didn't say. I if didn't anybody say does want to connect and chat, obviously LinkedIn and email are great, but Elaine and I are already committed to international and will be at Darm as well. Mm -hmm. I love both of those. Yeah, love myself too. some Dharma and the Verma. All right, guys, thanks again for coming. All, All right, right, thank, thank you, you now. Have a great right. day. You too. This episode of How We Grow is brought to you by LiveRes. To find out more about how LiveRes can help grow your vacation rental business, visit LiveRes.com. Make sure to search for How We Grow in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, or anywhere else podcasts are found and hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. On behalf of the team here at Inhabit, thanks for listening. Ready to rock your business? Join us at this year's Streamline Summit Rhythm in sunny Scottsdale, Arizona. 
This September 4th through the 6th, dive into an electrifying three-day event filled with industry insights, networking, and hands-on training. From visionary speakers to the latest vacation rental tech trends, the Streamline Summit is your backstage pass to property management stardom. Kick off with our legendary opening party, take a swing at our charity golf tournament benefiting the Children's Cancer Network, and end on a high note with a closing bash you won't forget. You'll learn from industry rock stars like keynote speaker Amber Erickson Hurdle, a hospitality veteran and top 30 branding professional known for her high energy talks on personal and business branding. And don't miss featured speaker Galen Emanuel, a world-class improviser and international speaker, transforming team dynamics with clients like Microsoft and NASA. Get your groove on with federal professionals and amplify your success. Don't miss a beat. Visit StreamlineSummit.com and snag your ticket today.